First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. As the state of emergency in California deepens, Yosemite Park is now closed indefinitely. The recent storms dumped as much as 15 feet of snow. Right crossing the road right in front of us. Right in front of us. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Let's go. And over in Texas, some storm chasers are having close encounters with tornadoes, while many other people are dealing with damage. Multiple tornadoes cut power to tens of thousands of people in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. From California across the Deep South, more than 90 million Americans are dealing with severe weather. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sarah Sowers. And I'm Francis Capper. The question is, will all the storms stay north of us? WUFT's Nick Mesa is tracking the storms and joins us now with the immediate forecast. Hi, I'm meteorologist Nick Mesa. Right now, we currently have a pretty strong low pressure system over the Midwest, making its way across into the Mid-Atlantic states and the Deep South, bringing some severe weather to Kentucky and Nashville. Over here in North Central Florida, though, things are looking pretty clear, um, pretty warm and windy as well, as you may have noticed um, this afternoon. High temperatures currently across the region, 82 over here in Gainesville, 82 in Bronson as well, 81 over in Lake City. Check out these sustained winds, though, 40 in Gainesville, 42 in Stark, 43 over in Jacksonville. For this reason, NWS has given a wind advisory through 8 p.m. for wind gusts over 40 miles per hour. As for later on this evening, though, we'll see those temperatures begin to decrease into the mid to lower 70s with a chance for some showers after midnight. Back to you guys. The GPD K-9 unit is suspended yet again, this time by the city manager. She's hinting that cost cutting may be a factor in further review of the unit. The unit drew scrutiny last summer because of the Terrell Bradley case. Bradley ran away from a police stop of his car. Then he lost an eye when the police dog found his hiding place. The police chief says the officers will now be reassigned to other duties. The dogs will remain in the care of their handlers until a decision is made about the future of the canine unit. Body cam footage shows tense moments during a police stop in Lottie. It happened when a bystander grew concerned about the driver in a traffic stop and came close to check in on him. Last month, Jessica Kreitzer was driving to Gainesville from Jacksonville Airport when she saw a black man in a traffic stop. She decided to turn around and observe the stop. He was driving on a suspended driver's license. When Kreitzer asked the man in detainment how he was, he said, When she approached the scene, Officer Michael Starling turned his attention to her. Officer Starling stated, No, you're going to exit because now you're, obstru you're obstructing. While citizens do have the right to bear witness to an arrest, they must stand 8 to 10 feet away. Kreitzer said she was not looking for a confrontation and that she would have just walked away. Laudy Police Captain Nathan Blum agreed with the officer's actions. However, Captain Blum said that the officers could have been more tactful and professional and that he has addressed that. Retired Gainesville police officer and professor of forensic studies at Florida Gulf Coast University, David Thomas, reviewed the body cam footage. Thomas told WUFT that the officers were absolutely right in what they were saying. United States citizens are protected by their First Amendment rights while observing police on public property. And you can record with your cell phone. To avoid being charged with any crime related to interfering, the experts say to stay 10 feet away, quiet, and out of the direct line of sight. You can later file to ask to review documents and footage and possibly file a complaint. A semi caught in fire after a crash in the southbound lane of State Road 93 in Alachua County. The cab was a total loss from the flames. High Springs and Alachua County Fire Rescue worked to limit the night's fire and prevent the spread from going to the surrounding trees. The truck driver escaped unharmed. Sometimes we can all use a quick squeeze of a stuffed animal. I personally love my teddy bears. And WUFT's Chris Will tells us how one mother is using those cuddly companions to help her children. The teddy bear is a simple thing. Colorful and cuddly, soft and sweet. An innocent toy with so many playful memories. He took Chevy everywhere. Like memories that, his... that last forever. That was his like best friend. <laughs> the best friend of Megan Bishop's four-year-old son, Taylor. Taylor was an old soul. I say it all the time. Way 
wise beyond his years. Um, and he just, he had the funniest jokes and just so vivacious. And I do, I miss him so much. So. I'm finally doing it. Nearly two years ago was the last time Megan saw Taylor hold Chevy. They always say like the first of everything is hard, but when you lose a child, there's so many firsts. Like his first day of kindergarten was well after the one year mark. Um, his, you know, I'll miss his first t-ball game, his first soccer game. I'll miss his first high school dance. Like there's still so many firsts that I won't get to see. And that's hard. A plane crashed into Megan and Taylor's car just outside North Perry Airport. And while he was in the car, this is the actual bear that he had. I'm trying to, there we go. I don't break this bear out very often. So <laughs> um, this is Chevy. Chevy, a blue Hot Wheels 50-year anniversary Build-A-Bear, was recovered from the accident and returned to Megan's arms. And after the accident and I had Chevy back, I knew I wanted to do something to make sure that Taylor's legacy would live as long as he was supposed to live. And I knew I wanted it to involve bears because of Chevy. Megan created a nonprofit that gets stuffed animals to first responders. The goal is to provide children with a little bit of Taylor. And now, Taylor's teddy bears has made its way to Gainesville. Taylor is more than just a boy who passed away in a plane crash. He deserves to be um, more than that. And so I just wanted the UF community to be involved in that. Ariel's mom works with Megan at Hollywood Hills Elementary. The drive there brought in 2,700 bears. A bin is set up in the HPNP building at the University of Florida for people to drop off their cuddly friends. Cuddly friends that encapsulate the boy Taylor was and the legacy he represents. Just that I love him and I miss him. I tell people all the time that the accident seems like yesterday, but it feels like I've lived a hundred lifetimes since I got to like hold him. And so I just hope I'm making him proud. The teddy bear is a simple thing. Colorful and cuddly, soft and sweet. An innocent toy keeping a family connected to a soul gone all too soon. Chris Will. WFT News. The drive at the University of Florida will continue through March 9th. An Amazon wish list will remain up even after that deadline closes. For more information on how you can donate, visit WUFT.org. In South Carolina, a judge sentences Alex Murdoch to life in prison for the shooting death of his wife and son. Despite the jury verdict, Murdoch said he's innocent. I respect this court. But I'm innocent. I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my wife, Maggie. And I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my son, Paul Paul. Judge Clifton Newman told him the evidence was overwhelming, pointing out his lies and opioid addiction. The judge said Murdoch would be haunted by the memories of his family. And I know you have to see Paul and Maggie during the night times when you're attempting to go to sleep. I'm sure they come and visit you. I'm sure. All day and every night. Murdoch was taken away for processing, medical tests, and a mental evaluation. He's expected to then be sent to a maximum security prison. The World Health Organization predicts excess deaths of 250,000 per year from 2030 to 2050 due to climate change. A march for climate action is going on right now in downtown Gainesville. It started a little more than an hour ago with a gathering at City Hall and a march to Hartward Soundstage. You're looking right now at a scene from the outdoor venue. The event includes speakers, live music, and vendors with a positive environmental message. If you are interested in joining, it's scheduled to last until 8 p.m. tonight. Francis, you know, I'm excited about other events this weekend, kind of like the Strawberry Festival. Have you been? No, I have not been to the Strawberry Festival, but I might just have to go check it out. Coming up on WUFT News First at Five, we'll give you more details on the Plant City Strawberry Festival happening this month. Stay with us.
You're watching WUFT TV News. We all noticed gas prices surge this past year, but your budget is also facing a spike in the cost of car insurance. Drivers nationwide are now paying more than $2,000 a year for car insurance. The company Bankrate crunched the numbers and found over the last year, premiums rose more than 13%. If you can drive over to Newberry, you'll find a landmark which shows people what a day in the life of a turn of the century farmer looks like. And by that, they mean the start of the previous century. Dudley Farm hosts an annual event called Plowing Up the Past. The event gives the community a glance at rural American history. A lot of people today don't have a clue where their food comes from. And I think by representing the past, we represent the here and now with respect, and future as well, with respect to agriculture. The Antique Tractor Show will continue tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The 88th annual Strawberry Festival is underway in Plant City, Florida. People were lined up Thursday morning when the gates opened at 10 a.m. Hundreds of thousands of people are expected to visit throughout the 11-day festival. Highlights include a midway, the Kitty Corral, and of course, all kinds of strawberry treats. Willie Nelson, Walker Hayes, Sarah Evans, and Ludacris are some of the scheduled entertainers. I'm so excited to go to the Strawberry Festival this weekend. You know, I'll be at the baseball game this weekend. Nick, what is the weather looking like? Yeah, so some good weather for, the, for this, uh, this evening's game, but tomorrow, not as much. I'll be back after the break to let you know just how that weather will be looking like. You're watching WUFT-TV News. I'm meteorologist Nick Mesa taking a look at our live cam over the swamp. Some partly cloudy skies as the sun begins to set. Temperatures in those lower 80s, but man, it was warm and windy today. Temperatures reaching almost our daily record high of 89 degrees, reaching almost 88 earlier today. Gusts around 44 miles per hour, winds about 25 miles per hour from the south southwest. We have a ball game tonight at Fam Condren Family Ballpark. Pretty nice conditions to start off around the mid to upper 70s around game time, slowly decreasing into the lower 70s as the game progresses. After midnight, though, we'll begin to see the chance for some rain begin to increase into tomorrow morning. Taking a look at our future radar, we see that cold front that I mentioned earlier begin to move in across the state over the region. Gains will be waking up to some scattered showers over in the morning. That cold front will begin to progress across the state throughout the day, again, bringing a chance for some scattered showers throughout the afternoon. By the early evening hours, though, we'll begin to clear out for a pretty nice Saturday evening. However, Ocala and the villages, you guys still may see some, sky, some spotty showers later on in the evening. But again, that'll be bringing in for a pretty nice Sunday back to hot and clear weather. Here in Gainesville, though, tomorrow's forecast starting off again with some scattered showers, highs in or temperatures in the upper 60s. Uh, by midday, those rain chances begin to decrease temperatures in the lower 70s. By 3 p.m., temperatures not in the 80s, kind of nice, a nice little break uh, in the mid 70s, rain chances again decreasing. Saturday high temperatures across the region, 79 over in Crystal River, 79 over in Ocala, 77 over there in Jacksonville. Um, and then we'll be looking at our weekend planner. So Saturday, whoop, Saturday we'll have, again, starting off in those upper 60s, a chance for some rain, which will be decreasing as the day progresses. Those temperatures, again, not, re not reaching those 80s as that cold front moves through, giving us a break from almost record temperatures throughout this week. By 7 p.m., looking for a pretty nice Saturday evening. As for Sunday, we're back to some nice temperatures in the, uh, in the 80 degrees by midday. Uh, chances for rain begin to clear out. As your six-day forecast, a break on Saturday, but we're turning to those low to mid 80s throughout the week with a chance for some more rain later on next weekend. Back to you guys. Thank you, Nick. A former Gator baseball champion from Tampa, Florida, receives an honor from his high school. Alonzo High retired their number 20 for Alex Feito before a game last night. You may recall he wore 21 for the Gators. His family was there to witness the honor. Um, it's a very special moment. Um, you know, something I, you know, growing up would have never thought would have happened. Um, being around the field all these uh, all these years, really, um, before I was even in high school, you know, no one's jersey were retired. Now we have three. Uh, Jose and Sherman to be a, a part of that group right there is uh, very special. Those guys helped me out a ton. 
During his Gator years, Faido was the 2017 College World Series Most Outstanding Player. He's one of just three former students from Alonso High School to have his jersey number retired. All this talk of baseball makes me want to go to the baseball park tonight. Sarah, do you want to go? I think so. I've never been to a baseball game before and I've always wanted to. Juliana, are you in? Oh, I'm so in. It's going to be a big series with Miami. I will say though, during the seventh inning stretch, I may have to check the gymnastics meet. It's number one versus number two for the Gators. And I've got more coming up on that after the break. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome to sports. I'm Juliana Rickenbaugh. So we meet again is what number two Florida Gymnastics could say to number one Oklahoma. The Sumaners just barely beat the Gators in the national championship last year. But as UF heads Norman tonight, the Gators don't seem to be talking about the past. It's something that so far has gone unspoken and Really, we just need to focus on what we do every day in the gym. And if we go out and do the gymnastics that we practice every single day, we know that we have a chance of coming out on top. It's always a great opportunity to compete against Oklahoma, especially uh, on their home floor at, in Norman. Um, it's going to be a very energetic, uh, lots of passion, lots of energy. The Gators have that energy in their gym and have been upping the ante heading into this meet. The internal drive of this team week to week pushing themselves uh, really pushes everybody else around them. So it's been really fun to see that happen on bars. Really, it's been a strong event for us. Especially last Friday, you have scored a nation season high event score at 49.8. Still, the peak is not there yet. Um, we've had several amazing uh, competitions on Friday nights, uh, yet we haven't put four events all together. Tonight at nine seems like a better time than ever to stick those landings. Front flips to potential bat flips, the Gator baseball team takes on Miami today. Our Gabby Vitale is live at Condren Ballpark. Gabby, how many home runs should we expect to hit tonight? Two, maybe three? Oh, Juliana, I think I'm taking the over on the long balls today. Miami must have brought the hurricane with them because it is a windy day here as fans are piling into Condron Ballpark. Other than this being a top rivalry, it is also a top 25 matchup as the Florida Gators are number six and the Miami Hurricanes are number 22. Florida has taken seven of the last eight series and took two out of the three last year in Coral Gables. For the Florida baseball bats, They've been dominant to start the season, recording double digit hits in nine of 10 games. And it's been a complete yard party as the Gators have launched multiple home runs in each of the last five games. And the NCAA home run leader is none other than Jack Caglione, who leads the nation with eight long balls and has one in six of his last seven games. Brandon Sprout will tow the rubber tonight for the Gators with Hurston Waldrop tomorrow and the two way Jack Caglione on Sunday. Reporting live from Condron Ballpark, I'm Gabriella Vitale. Back to you, Juliana. Thanks, Gabby. Moving over to the softball diamond, the Gators haven't had quite as much success scoring runs lately. They dropped three of four games last weekend. Florida got blanked against the two ranked opponents they played. The Gators lost 10-0 to number one UCLA and lost 8-0 to number 22 Oregon. In fact, Florida scored just 11 runs in the four games of the tournament, but today, the number eight Gators return to action in the Southeast as they begin a three-game series at Alabama Birmingham tonight at seven. Gator men's basketball will celebrate senior night tomorrow when LSU comes to town. The Gators will honor Jason Jatobo, Kyle Lofton, and the injured Colin Castleton. While Myron Jones will also be graduating, he will not participate this year after celebrating his senior day last year. But a bigger question going into this game, might be the future of freshman Riley Kugel, who has scored in the double figures in his last seven games. The Gators tip off against LSU at six. In their first meeting this year, Florida won 67-56. We keep talking about Gator Emilio Pinto. It's just because she's that good. Through four games, the sophomore has scored 15 goals. On Tuesday, though, the whole Gator lacrosse team pitched in for 20 goals against Furman, Good for the number seven Gators to move to two and two. 
Up next, you have host Arizona State Sunday at noon. That's your sports. Now back to the desk. Thanks, Juliana. Meet Aber Clam Lincoln. Scientists in Florida say this mollusk is 214 years old based on the layers on its shell. That means it has been alive since 1809, the same year as its namesake, former President Abraham Lincoln. Gulf Specimen Marine Laboratories says an AmeriCorps member named it Blaine while found it while walking with his family. They say it's an ocean quahog clam, a type that can live for more than 200 years, as evidenced by Aber Clam Lincoln. And before we go, let's take one last check on the weather. For those of you headed to the Strawberry Festival tomorrow, things looking not too good in the morning, but things clearing up later in the day. Taking a look at your six day forecast. Once again, returning back to the lower 80s by early next week. Thank you, Nick. BBC World News is up next, and PBS NewsHour is coming up at 7. But your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org. Have a good night.